the potential impact of TensorFlow on the fighting game community. I've split this talk up into five parts. What is TensorFlow? How it is used in games? Uh, what is the aim of the developer? When will we see this in action? And then, of course, summary conclusion. So, what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow was developed by Google Brain and uh, then became open source. And so a lot of uh, other companies have become very interested in it. Some of them you may recognize, including SNK, who is going to be presenting uh, the technology and how they're using it at the Game Creators Conference on March the 30th, 2019, where other game developers will also be uh, in attendance, such as Capcom, Bam uh, Bamco, sorry, um, Bandai Namco, Square Enix, and Sega. So let's talk about what exactly is uh, TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a artificial intelligence um, that is uh, using a neural network. A neural network is a bunch of systems, uh, or let's say let's say CPUs or programs that are connected to, to each other to compare inputs and look at which way to deal with these inputs can achieve the required result. So for example, on the left side here, when we see the input layer, let's say for example, you have a situation where the CPU is getting up off the floor and is being attacked by a human, right? So you have five different inputs, five different ways to deal with the situation. Let's say, for example, an anti-air or a roll or a CD counter or a back dash or a just block, <laughs> right? Those are your five different inputs. And then we've got to look at how each CPU in, on, in let's imagine in different, on different, in different locations across the world handle the situation and what were the results? So, for example, and this is represented in the hidden layer. We're looking at, for example, one computer tried uh, to anti-air and was countered by a safe jump um, or an invincible move. And then the other, uh, another computer, another like PlayStation 4, Xbox, or whatever, um, had a situation where they just found a foot to the face and was completely destroyed. So they have to compare all of these data, all of these results and figure out which one was the one that actually worked every time. Of course, it becomes very, very complex. Uh, but the point is they are working together rather than one CPU, one computer by itself, trying to understand how to fight, how to play the game. It's comparing all the results and all the data with all the other, for example, PlayStation 4s on the network. That, of course, uh, is going to have quite an impact on how uh, artificial intelligence works in games. So let's um, let's talk more about that exact, exactly in, in part two, or however, how this is used in games. So far, um, it might sound kind of... Um, a dark dystopian future where the artificial intelligence is figuring out how to destroy humans and um, <laughs> and just 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 stop them from being able to even try and play games because they already know what you're going to do. That's not really the primary objective, I think, for the game developers. The idea is to um, develop an artificial intelligence that understands how to play games, and it's already being done. Um, and, the, and so what that means for, art, for, for game developers is that you have an AI that already understands fighting games and how to play it, rather than actually coding a new artificial intelligence for each new game. So for the fighting game player, um, all of this kind of, um, it, it depends on what is the aim of the developer. So. What is the aim of the developer? So we are, you know, looking at that, we can say that, okay, they're trying to save time in, in developing, in coding and in creating. And that, of course, means that the games can come out quicker. That's great. Um, as a competitive fighting player, it's a little bit scary because you're wondering what they're going to do with all the data that is being sent by humans and players. Um, 
Uh, but for the, the really hardcore player, that could mean that um, the computer's um, opponents, the computer opponents are becoming much more intelligent and that in turn can lead to them improving their own skill. So, but not just this, but as we were saying, the computers are collecting all of your inputs. And I've already seen this in a couple of other games and you might have seen it in the warning when you're trying out uh, a new game, how your data is being collected and where it's being sent and what it's being done, what's being done with it. So yes, this does mean that uh, our data, our inputs are being stockpiled and we are basically be all being downloaded. But as we said, the aim of the developer is not really here. It's not really here for, for to download you and totally destroy you. That's, that's not, it's just not, it's just not, it's just not uh <laughs> it's just not profitable there's no point having a game that knows how to just totally defeat you that's that's not the purpose of games the purpose of games really is to make you have fun or to let you have fun or to create a fun environment so collecting all of this data can have a beneficial result trying to figure out how to make the gamer have a good game so this this doesn't necessarily mean how to completely destroy you it could be how to how to stop uh, attacking or how to hold back or how to be more human and make mistakes so that the player has an opportunity to to do their own amazing combo or even how to teach players to get better so um that then leads us to the um fourth part of when will we see this in action right so uh, we've already, well, we haven't particularly uh, myself seen it in action, but actually if you use Gmail, uh, you have seen this in action. It's already begun. Um, uh, so if you've seen your emails and you're looking at Gmail and you see these little free blocks here, it's this is a, an example of um, a neural network and artificial intelligence reading your messages not necessarily giving you your personal information away, but it's looking at the language and giving you already uh, uh, predefined uh, appropriate responses. It's very different to predictive text where it's just guessing the next word because of a bunch of sentences. This is looking at what kind of response would be good and would match you in a situation. So that's pretty crazy. But that is what's happening right now. And as you've seen before, all the other companies are already looking at this technology and figuring out how best to use it. So where else are we going to see this? Um, well, uh, we've we've also seen this in the medical fields where it's looking at human bodies and being able to predict when when a disease can actually occur. It can even create art. And of course, uh, for the FGC, the most the biggest impact is we're going to see this in Samurai Showdown. Showdown. So to conclude, we've looked at how it's been. Uh, we've looked at what it is, how it's used in games, what's the aims of the developer, and when we'll see this in action. Uh, so. Really, to conclude, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this AI works, how this AI is collecting all of this information and what they're actually going to do with it. Are they going to somehow create a more fun environment for gamers or are they going to create the most crazy and oppressive AI that will know exactly what you're going to do and totally destroy you? I, I don't think that's really the point. So it will be interesting to see how that works. But if, if anything, creating the AI is definitely well, an AI that can actually learn to play games is going to save on development costs and development time. And that means we'll get our games quicker. So I hope that uh, gives you an insight onto what ten, uh, I mean, I've got the name already, uh, what TensorFlow is and how that's going to benefit us. And that's the impact on the fighting game community. Thanks for listening. I would like to say subscribe, but I'm not sure I'm going to do this every time. So, um, oh, go on then. Subscribe and like. Uh, you're welcome. All right. See you guys next time. Are you okay?